So one thing that we've been trying to do on this channel in the last handful of videos is introduce challenges. In this case, we're doing a almost chopped kitchen style challenge where one of us is forced to brew without knowing what secret ingredients we have to use in the beer. Last week, Peter made me brew with applesauce and raisins, and that beer has been chugging along. It's actually, I think, about done now. So Smelling it's really my good. turn to give him some random ingredients. All right, what do we got? Boom. <laughs> First of all, I'm gonna let everybody know the salt was the hardest thing to avoid when buying these. Yeah, it's really hard to get things that aren't overly salty and gonna get you past that level of you know, making your beer too salty so that you're really narrowed into what you can do. So I have bananas, which is a fun call back to our, uh, our fruits video. Might have done that on purpose. Licorice spice herbal tea times two. Okay, so a little bit of anise. I'll have to give that a smell and see how it works. And chocolate, Hershey dark cocoa. Okay. Yeah, I almost bought you Altoids, but they were really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> they were $20, I was like, mm. So I have to make a beer with chocolate, with bananas, and with licorice spiced herbal tea. That sounds challenging already because I can see some of these being hard to play with. I feel like I should be pigeonholed into a dark beer with a liquid cocoa, or not with a liquid, but with a special dark cocoa, but something that we've been kind of good at doing over the last handful of years is doing a style called a white stout. So I'm thinking I have to go that route and find a way to get all the flavor out of this while minimizing the color. So it might end up turning amber, but hopefully not dark. Processing? I knew I was gonna throw a curveball with the bananas. Yeah. Well, it's a combination, so bananas and chocolate, that's one thing. Bananas and tea, that's another thing. Yeah. Chocolate and tea, that's one thing. Banana, chocolate, and tea, that's... <laughs> I'm debating if I go Belgian and kind of play on some natural esters, or if I go super neutral and really try to highlight the ingredients that way. I feel like if I go Belgian, I might overpower the tea. And if I go super neutral, I might let one of these kind of pop out a little bit too much. So that's what I'm processing in my brain right now. Um, either way, I think I have to do a combination of mashing the bananas and then caramelizing some too towards the end to see if I can get that rich banana flavor. I want to find a way to keep that sweetness in the beer. Uh, the cocoa, I'm already thinking of doing some sort of a, a tincture or a, an extract that I'll make myself with the cocoa and try to add that to minimize the color but create all that chocolate flavor. And then the tea, I'm really just going to have to smell the tea and find out where it's going to go best. Well, shall we start heating up some water? Let's start heating up some water. All right. All right, so I got an idea. I think I'm gonna go pretty light on that grain bill. Let's say, ow, ow. <laughs> uh, all. aim it for not much color, but I'm gonna use something weird. Overall, I'm still going for a pretty light body and everything like that. This will add some puffiness, some interesting graininess, and I think it'll just kind of give some dynamic to an otherwise pretty neutral base that I'm going to be using as a platform for all those fun ingredients. So we are ready to mash in our strike water right now is at 142 degrees. I'm going for a peptidase style protein rest first and then I'm going to make up a little bit of our herm system with some hot water that we have going from a bigger batch of brew that we're already doing. So excuse the mess because there's a lot going on out here. But uh, yeah, let's try to mash in right around that 133 degree range. Uh, and what I got in here is I think 10 pounds of two row, I've got a quarter pound of acid malt and I've got uh, uh, 1.75 pounds of that triticale that I was talking about. Greens all over my screen. Mm, let's see. Some chloride. Yeah. Being super careful not to burn myself, but I'm gonna aim for 1.5 mils of lactic acid in this mash. Perfect. I've got my salts! So 
So if you take a quick look here, you'll see that I set up a pseudo Herms system with this whole situation. So instead of using the direct heat from the mash and boil, I actually heated up some water on the side and I'm controlling the heat by running our wort through this hot water recirculation coil in there and then back into the top. Uh, we started at 133 for our dough in temperature. It dropped a little bit to 130 for a protein rest. Uh, and then I started heating it up and now we are at 152. And if you remember from our how to add fruit to beer video, bananas have some amylase. So I'm gonna try to add half my bananas in the mash at this point in time before I bring it back up for a mash out. So here we go. Take the banana, you crush it in half. I'm gonna to try to break these up by squeezing the banana as much as I can into the mash to get uh, that full surface area that I possibly can. Uh, the rest of the bananas I'm actually gonna take and I'm gonna to try to caramelize them in a different way and I'm gonna add them later on. My freshly mashed hands. There's one banana. Two bananas. Okay, so what we did is we did a slow uh, recirculating Herms thing uh, step up from the protein rest all the way up to a sacrification rest. Then I smushed some bananas and had it mash in with the bananas for about another hour. And then we did another set of that recirculation all the way up to a mash out temperature. So we're sitting at 170 degrees right now. Now I'm just gonna sparge this into it and move on to the boil, which is where I'm gonna start adding some more of those flavors. All right, so to make the cocoa work, I've got kind of two different options that I'm thinking of if I want to get it to still not impart a ton of color, but impart a lot of flavor. So I'm going to do some experimentation here. Uh, the first way that I'm thinking is I have some boiled up water. I'm going to try to do a solution with the cocoa and the boiled up water and then strain out as much of the solids as possible and hopefully get a lot of flavor in that water. The second is something that I can add later, so I'm not going to worry about today, and that is doing a tincture, basically getting some alcohol and doing an infusion of that cocoa and alcohol, then straining that out and adding that during fermentation. All right, so I got my boiled up water right here. And I've got a French press and some coffee filters. I'm gonna to try to do a two-stage filtration on this, basically. So we'll let that sit for about four minutes before we really squeeze it out and then from there we'll go ahead and take that solution and then filter it through a coffee filter and see what we get. I might try a couple different variations of this but this has been sitting and we're going to go ahead and give this a good squish. <laughs> I don't think that actually did anything. See if we can filter it out even more. We've been going at this for like, uh, I don't know, eight, nine hours, something like that. Uh, we're right around dinner time, so, you know, it's been a good solid day. I'm kind of trying to figure out what the balance is going to be between adding the chocolate and the licorice, and I don't think I'm going to need too many of these to get a really strong flavor, so. Uh, I'm thinking like, that much sounds pretty good. Six bags for the whole batch. That's enough that it's really gonna pop that chocolate. I'm kind of anticipating some to fall out during fermentation, but at the same time, I'd rather undershoot and use some sort of a tincture or something, like play with the flavors on the back end to really fine tune what I'm going for. And I haven't yet decided whether or not I'm gonna add one of these pints that I got off of uh, the cocoa or both of them. So we'll kind of see what I'm getting for flavor, for a color first. If it darkens the whole beer too much, then I might just go ahead and pitch the other. Uh, away and then uh, do some sort of a tincture or a back flavoring. It's gonna hopefully give me a lighter color in the final product. All right, let's go. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna kill the heat and then I'm gonna get my counter flow water started so that I can, or, or my immersion chiller started so that I can get this cooled down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add these in during the cool down stage so that it's hot enough to sanitize everything but not too hot that it's gonna pull some tannic bitter flavors off of all this. Get the counter for a 
God, that was my face. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so I didn't really think too much about what I'm going to add, but here's some hops that I'm going to add towards uh, the end, just because that makes it beer, officially. Also, while we're cooling down, go ahead and get my cocoa in there. And we'll start with just one and see how that affects the color. That's still a lot. All right, let's get some tea bags in there. So I'm just checking the cocoa level, seeing if I want to add more of that chocolate. And I think I need a little bit, but not a lot. I'm hoping that you get that top light layer and all the dark stuff settles in the beer. We still end up with something light, but it, it might end up turning a little bit amberish or brown. All right, it's getting a little loud in here, so we apologize for that, but I've got everything all chilled down. I got the right amount of chocolate in my beer. The next thing I got to do is basically just get it into my fermenter and pitch my yeast. Uh, but I'm going to grab a gravity sample first so I know what I'm working with. Uh, and like I said, we're going to let this ferment out, and I'm going to play with a lot of these flavors in the back end just to make sure, you know, I can nail it and get it just right. Just right. Hey, a slightly less boozy beer. What's this? Perfect. Just like I planned it. Got some of that in there? Yes, Pier O2. And that super nasty looking regulator. It's starting to turn pretty chocolatey actually, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Yeah. Cause that's like gunk that I'm getting. We can do a good, uh, good true dump there. Yeah. Looks like it's bubbling, so we're good and oxygenated. I think we're ready to go. Oh yeah, well we'll see it for the tasting. All right, so when we last left off, I was pitching yeast when Logan was nippless, and now he's nippled. <laughs> so I guess it's time to start. I'd, what can I say? I get excited when it comes to beer tastings. Yeah. Bam, so this is your beer. It is pretty young still, isn't it? It has been kegged and aged for all of a day. <laughs> uh, no, not even that. All of three hours. It doesn't so look too bad. I kegged <laughs> it, I shake and baked it. And then uh, obviously a little murk murk going on. I don't know. Remember if, what? If this had like two days more of aging, I'm sure it would be astronomically better than it is right now. But we're gonna give it a go anyway. That's the most amazing pour ever. You're damn right it is. Bam. All right. So this is the beer that has been brewed with bananas, bananas which just kind of <laughs> smells like bananas. <laughs> it's been also brewed with a uh, licorice. Spiced tea. A licorice spiced tea. Not very much of it either. Not a ton. Enough to give you that aromatic, but not like overpowering it. And then also some cocoa. Some cacao. C cacao. So it's not dark. Your cacao it did not make it dark. I tried to keep it in the realm that it would be like not overly colored. In my ideal world, this would be blonde and bright and like light lager esque. <laughs> but what it ended up being is sort of. Orangey? Orangey, very orangey. Actually, beautiful. Um, but ultimately, I am smelling this tea coming through so hardcore on top of the bananas. I can't believe how much like aromatics you got from that tea. Yeah, you're getting like uh, some, you're getting the tea notes, but you're also getting some orange notes off that tea, because that tea was spiced with oranges as well. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay, well, pff, I just kind of grabbed it out of the shelf. Uh, that actually <laughs> makes sense. It does have a sort of sweet orangey character. The anise or licorice, whatever it was in there, that's pretty potent. That's, like, yeah, it's, it's definitely there. It's definitely like up in your face, which is crazy because you put like, what, four or five tea bags in a, a whole five bag, gallon yeah. batch of beer? Yeah, but, My uh, God. but I knew it was potent. We can tell that when you just were making the tea by itself. So oh, yeah, I opened that sucker up. I was like, oh God, what'd I do? I get the bananas the next thing that I get. I get a lot of that banana off there. Uh, not as a sweet kind of banana, but as like, a feel like a it, it is yeah it's totally has a mouthfeel which we actually talked about in a previous video about 
potentially adding, what are they, dextrins? Yeah. Is it, uh, yeah, so potentially adding dextrins, and this definitely has that banana creaminess, which is really kind of fucking with me right now, for lack of better terms. That's fair. Um, but the cocoa, the cocoa's, the cocoa's there, but not as strong as I would have expected for how much went it's into it. It's so subtle. If you didn't tell me there was cocoa in here, I wouldn't have. I mean, even now, I'm like, ah, but is it? But is it? It's it's, com- de- it's definitely there. It kind of like, if you really think about it, you get that chocolate coated banana kind of feel. But it's, you know, it's not it's not as cocoa-y as when that powder was still in suspension, right? Because yeah. a lot of that, I think, came from that particulate matter. There's a lot of, there's a lot of flavors. And they're all kind of like doing their things. For being kegged all of, you know, an hour at this point... I'm not, I'm not mad at this beer. I'm not mad at this beer. This beer tastes like somebody took a sort of like Hefeweizen and then yeah. like walked by and accidentally like dumped a bunch of black licorice into it. There's a lot going on. I was just like, yeah, they're like, you're like, whoops, black licorice. Oh, wait, okay, sure, let it roll. If I could, yeah, if I could see this beer age out for like two or three weeks, though, I think it'd be a whole different project. But right now, there's like all these flavors are just hitting you in the palate. It's it's a very confusing beer. I'm not gonna lie. But um, the most important thing is it's better than yours. Uh oh oh. Should we? I, we need a rematch. I think we need a rematch. Well, we're gonna be doing this over and over again. Ideally, do you guys like this idea? We should do this more, right? Let's do it. Final final verdict. I'm gonna give this beer a five and a half. <laughs> you son of a, you son of a dick monger. Can make Ryan try them both. He can, he can be the judge. Oh, we should have Ryan try them. We need an impartial judge. We need an impartial judge, Ryan. No, it's this beer is very drinkable, but it does have a lot of flavors that are all sort of competing for first in it, which is the mo- It's it's more confusing than anything else. But that's cause it hasn't conditioned. You you got three days. <laughs> I got I got two hours. It's not fair. It makes such a, such a big difference. It does. So much of this is going to settle out. You know it. All right. All in all, this is a super fun beer to brew. I'm really excited that I got to make this, uh, and, and I am excited to see what happens with this as it matures and develops. I think both ours need lagering time. So if you guys want to see a sequel to this, when both these beers have three weeks of conditioning time, let us know in the comments below. Well, you know... I think my beer, even though they're both young, is better. My beer is by far superior. Do we need an impartial judge? We do. All right, let's bring out the Josh. Josh! I think he's pooping.